Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing and engineering qualification, to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Michaela Quilici. Michaela is a business navigator, an award-winning award business growth coach, marketing consultant, Forbes Coaches Council member, and host of the Q Your Business Success podcast. Michaela is a business expert with 19 years of experience. She works with CEOs and business owners to bridge the gap to meet their next level of business growth and mindset using strategy, systems, and self-leadership. Vancouver Business Network members, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Michaela Quilici a warm BBN welcome. It is not about finding the right clients. It's about creating your business in the right way so that they find you. If you are a business owner who is responsible for finding your own clients, then this training applies to you today. Your clients and customers are looking for you. They are searching out solutions to problems that they have. They are searching out um, a way to fulfill a need or an aspiration that they have. And so they are looking for you already. It's your job as a business owner to present yourself in the right way so that they see you, so that they are uh, inclined to take action and to work with you. Make sense? So let me ask you this, on a scale of one to five, how well do you feel you are magnetizing your buyers now? Let's shoot up some numbers. One, two, one, two, five, two, three, three, two, cut, heard a five one. in there, one. Okay, so is there room for improvement? I think so, yes? So at the end of our time today, I'm going to share with you a seven-step roadmap to master your brand positioning so that you can stand out from your competition, so that you can be seen as the go-to expert in your market. Does that sound good? Because at the end of the day, you need to know your customer intimately because your entire marketing strategy and plan is hinged on knowing who that buyer is. talk about traction for a minute. If you're not being seen and perceived in the right way uh, from your, by your market, what happens is, is that traction is really difficult. It's difficult to gain traction. And traction is the thing that you need in order to trigger momentum. And momentum is the thing that you need that generates opportunities and opportunities turn into sales. Does that make sense? So if you don't gain traction, sales become harder. It's like you can't quite get there. You, it just feels too hard. You're spinning, you're stuck. And so it's that traction that you need in order to kickstart the momentum. So it's like riding your bike up a hill with the wind at your face. It's really hard to do that, yes? It's hard to get traction when you're doing that. So today I'm going to share with you a framework so you can ride your bike down the hill with the wind at your back so that you can get more momentum. Yes? In the 19 years of my business experience, I've learned that there are three key success drivers that every business owner needs to master at any stage of business growth. And I'm gonna share a little bit about what those three key success drivers are in just a little bit so that you can get a sense of where you stack up with those and then you'll know what you need to focus on in order to adjust. But first I wanna tell you a little story. 
So in the 10 years that I spent working for growth stage startups, I worked uh, in the marketing department, leading marketing teams to support salespeople to drive revenue. And in one particular company, we became one of the fastest growing companies in Canada, named by Profit 100 Magazine. We grew an eight-figure company in five years, with little outside investment, and a small team. And just to put that in perspective, that's pretty good growth. I think some of the sales guys in the room would agree that, yeah? And what I learned during that time, I was mentored by the CEO, I was the youngest person on the executive team, I rose in the ranks quickly, I was a student of the, of the game, of the business. And what I learned is that it's possible, it's possible for a lean company with a small team and little outside investment to grow profitably, sustainably, and become number one in their niche. And we did. We survived the dot-com bubble. Remember that? 1999. We were an internet company. We survived 9-11. A lot of our clients were in New York. That didn't go well. We had a lot of competition. We were competing against monster.com. And, but we did it. And we did it despite what was going on in our external environment. So how did we do it? We focused on what mattered. We had a strategy and a system. We had a niche. We executed impeccably. We met client expectations. We did all, we did all the things. And so that comes back to what are those three key success drivers? A lot of business owners struggle in one or more of these areas. So as I'm talking about them, I want you to reflect on which one of these could use some improvement in your particular business. Because these three are the make it or break it. So number one is focus. We have to have a dedicated, relentless focus on the right things in the right order that will make a difference based on where we are now and where we want to get to. And it's going to be different for everybody. There's no one size fits all marketing strategy. System, having a really focused uh, system that is predictable, that you are implementing and that you are uh, employing on a regular basis. And that leads us to execution. We have to address the limited skill set. So do we have gaps in our marketing skills and our sales skills? Marketing and sales skills will make or break any business. So do your skills need to tune up in that area? Are there some limited mindset, limited beliefs that you have um, that are preventing you or self-sabotaging your ability to show up as a business owner, as a successful business person? And the third thing is, do you perhaps have a limited uh, toolkit or tool set? So what are the tools that might be missing in your execution that you need to employ <coughs> or use that are going to help you uh, really execute well? So out of those three, focus, system, and execution, where do you feel in your particular situation you could use some improvement? Who's for focus? Put up your hands. So there's a handful of you for focus. What about system? A couple of you for system. And what about execution? Quite a few for execution. Okay, so there's work to do. And, uh, and that's what it's all about, is to, to learn and grow and develop these areas so that you can um, really be successful in your business. Who here wants to make an impact? Yes, a lot of people, I see a lot of hands up for impact, yes, because otherwise, why are we doing this, right? Why are we doing this? So if you're like any of the business owners and entrepreneurs that I work with, you've got a purpose and a passion for what you do, you've got a why for why you started this business and why you're not working for somebody else, but you're an entrepreneur, yes? And I'm the same way. And my story is really born out of, um, the passion and purpose to support people to be seen and to be heard. Because my own personal story um, really has influenced that. I developed a terrible speech impediment when I was eight years old, which prevented me from speaking fluently. I spent the majority of my life hiding, judging myself, feeling shamed and frustrated because people didn't get me. They thought I was stupid. 
they thought that you know those first impressions well i wasn't making very good first impressions and so i get it i get what it's like at a visceral level to be hiding in plain sight and i also get what it's like because now i've spent my entire life dedicated to reclaiming my voice understanding who i am the value i provide and how to project that out to people to help them uh, to help influence um, the you know the message and I've, I've used that to influence the perception of how I see myself how uh, my behaviors and my actions impact others and um, and how to to really uh, change that and turn that turn that around and so that's why I do what I do and that's why I'm really passionate about it because I see a lot of people who just may not have those skills and those abilities or that practice to be seen. It's like, I'm like a translator in a sense to help people translate who they are inside so they're seen uh, that way on the outside. And so since 2010, I've been working with business owners and entrepreneurs to help them uh, be seen and be heard, get clients, get noticed, get profitable, grow and scale their business. And, um, and that is really the story of, of why I do what I do and why that's so important to me to help people achieve that type of success. And so often people come to me and they say, I need a marketing plan or I wanna grow my business. I need help with marketing. I need a new website. I need social media. I need to be doing SEO. What about online ads? Uh, all of these things and while each and every one of these marketing tactics in and of themselves are brilliant, but not all of them may be for you, as some of you have already shared, not having much success in using some of them. You see, because all of those marketing activities need to be part of an overall plan. They need to be part of an overall strategy so that they're supporting, um, if they are a means to an end. So I like to say that marketing activities without a strategy is like an orchestra without a conductor. It's just noise. <laughs> Can you imagine 50 musicians showing up for the symphony at the or Orpheum? They all show up with their beautiful instruments, each of them so unique and wonderful, and they all sit down and the conductor doesn't show up. What happens? They're lost because the conductor has the score. The score is the plan. He or she uh, has developed a strategy for that score. He or she is cueing all of the instruments to come in at very particular times and is weaving all of those individual instruments and all of those sounds to create a beautiful song. And unfortunately, a lot of people's marketing sounds like that noise, sounds like that symphony without that conductor. And it's, it's frustrating for the business owner and it's frustrating for the consumer because we can't, we don't get it. We can't see you. We need help. We have problems we need solved. We are looking for help and we don't understand the language. We don't get what you're putting out there as a business owner. And I've been there myself too. And so I get, I get what that's like. And that's why I came up with this, with this analogy, which I, which I really love. And your marketing deserves to sound like a beautiful song. Yes? yes? Because what is more compelling? What is more compelling? A beautiful song or sounds that an instrument is making? A song. A song. And so buyers are doing one of two things within the first six seconds. They are either compelled or repelled to work with you. It's one or the other. And honestly, you want that. You want them, you want to either compel and magnetize them or you want to repel them because they're not a good fit and, um, and there's somebody else that uh, can take that, that client instead of you. And so when you are evaluating, and I invite you to evaluate all of your materials, everything that you're doing to present yourself in the world, whether it's your website, your elevator pitch, your business cards, your brochures, uh, your marketing copy on your website, your social media, the images you're putting out there, how you dress, and Patty is gonna to talk to you about that next week. How are you showing up? All of those factor into your package. So that's your one bit of homework for me for tonight is to go away and really have a look at all of your material and how well 
are you compelling or are you repelling those people? So just first glance, do you feel like you are compelling them? Do you feel like there can be room for improvement? <coughs> what, do you, what are you getting a sense of? We don't know, right? We don't know. So if we don't know, the clue is, is your phone ringing off the hook with clients? No. So if your phone is not ringing off the hook with clients, if your sales pipeline, if your, if your pipeline, if your um, appointment calendar is not booked with discovery calls, sales calls, coffee dates, if, um, for example, you're at an event and if somebody doesn't automatically say, oh, yeah, I totally get what you do, those are clues. Because when someone is compelled, you can see it in their eyes, you can, you can really get a sense of that. So does that answer your question, Vitaly, about that? Perfect. So I invite you to take a look at that and see where there's room for improvement. So first things first, if you are looking to compel and magnetize your buyers, you have to start with a marketing strategy. Otherwise, everything else is just noise, right? So your marketing strategy is your foundation. And for the construction guys in the, in the house, this analogy is for you, which is your marketing strategy is like a blueprint of your architectural drawings or a blueprint if you're gonna build a house, for example or you're gonna construct some kind of something or other. And so if you're gonna build a house, you have to start with the end in mind, right? You don't just all of a sudden assemble the general contractor and start picking paint colors and going to uh, you know, buy furniture because you don't know what kind of house you're building. So the marketing strategy, that's what it is. It's your blueprint. You start with the end in mind. What kind of business am I building? What do I want that to look like? Then you reverse engineer. What are the right marketing activities that are gonna help me build brand awareness, attract people, generate leads, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the key piece about the marketing strategy. And so um, today, I'm gonna to share with you that blueprint um, for the business, which is the seven steps to master your brand positioning. And that's how that ties in to this piece here. So every business goes through similar steps to grow and get to the next level. They all have to be noticed, get noticed, and that's about attracting, attracting the ideal client. And there's things that you can do to attract people. Then you, the second step is to convert those prospects into paying customers. And conversion strategies are very different from attraction strategies. If you think about it, attraction is more can be more like marketing activities and conversion are more like sales activities. So marketing and sales need to be working together. If you're just doing marketing and you're not doing sales, you're not gonna be converting. And then that's when all your marketing dollars are going into a leaky bucket. Because if you're not capturing those leads and deliberately having conversations to convert those folks, you can't get to the next stage. Once you've got your attraction going with your marketing, then you've got a good conversion process happening and your sales are working and if you can duplicate that process, then it's all about getting profitable. So delivering your service, delivering it on time, on budget, meeting client expectations, and then scaling your business so it's just, um, we go from you being the sole person in your business to having a team to be able to really take it to the next level. So that's the main system that I use and that I teach when I work with my private clients and there are 12 advanced business growth strategies that I walk through with them at, at each of these uh, stages. And I'm gonna share with you in a little bit how you can get access to those, okay? Your brand positioning is at the core of that marketing strategy. Your brand positioning is like your DNA of your business, if you will. And if your brand positioning isn't targeted, isn't aligned appropriately, then your marketing becomes really tough and your sales become even tougher. So for those of you who are having a hard time um, at the attraction stage, where do, you know, I heard a lot of, where do I find the right clients? 
where do I spend my marketing dollars? How, what kind of marketing should I be doing? What I'm hearing a lot of is that your brand positioning might not be dialed in. And so that's where you want to start. So rather than throwing more marketing dollars at the problem, we need to look at how you can uh, define your brand in a better way. So we're going to walk through that blueprint together. How do you know if your brand positioning is on target? So I'm going to give you some red flags and some symptoms and you tell me what's coming up in your business and then you'll know if it's a branding problem or not. Are you losing out on contracts to the competition? Maybe you can't get a decision, a meeting with the decision maker. Doors seem to be closed. I heard someone in the audience say earlier um, that um, they can't get people to take their phone call or maybe you're sending out a proposal or an email and you never hear back. Or people say, oh yeah, that really sounds great, I'll get back to you, and they never do. Maybe your conversion rates are lower than expected, fewer sales than expected. Maybe you're having sales conversations and it turns into a scrutinizing of you and an interview of you of why they should work with you instead of a graceful enrollment conversation where they're understanding your value from the get-go and they're not putting up any obstacles or objections around price or anything else. Maybe your elevator pitch is just falling on deaf ears. People don't get it. They're not getting you and you're just not, where do I get leads? So that is, these are some, some red flags. So do any of these red flags resonate? Which ones resonate? All of them. All of them? Okay. <laughs> Some of them? So if one or more of these resonate, then you probably have some brand positioning work to do. So this is where we can start with this. Seven steps to master your brand positioning. The first step is you must, must understand what it is that you are actually selling in your business. This may seem really rudimentary, but most people get this wrong. And most people who struggle are getting this wrong. And so knowing what you sell, what does that mean? Well, people buy outcomes. They buy benefits and outcomes. Starbucks, they're a coffee house, right? They sell coffee, that's what they sell. People go to their coffee house to buy coffee, yeah? No, they don't. Starbucks knows what they sell. They sell a third place to go between home and work. They sell a community, a space that people can gather in. If they just sold coffee, they'd be competing with every other coffee house on the block. And this is where we get into trouble. Uh, what else? Norwegian Cruise Lines. Norwegian Cruise Lines, they don't sell vacations. They don't sell water transportation. They sell memories. People go on vacations to have memories so that when they come back, that's the outcome that they're getting after engaging with that service. So I invite you to think about what is it that you are really selling in your business? Financial planners, they don't sell financial plans or mutual funds or investments. Uh, I know a financial planner, I have a, a client who's a financial planner and they sell harmony and peace of mind. And so all of their branding is around that because once you start selling coaching, consulting, SEO services, um, you know, financial services. Once you start uh, talking about yourself in that way, you're putting yourself in the commodity market and commodities can only compete on price because the consumer doesn't know. One personal development coach is just like another personal development coach. Somebody who does financial planning is just like the next one. Sales consultant, they all sound the same. Marketing people, how do I choose? So it's our job as a business owner to figure out what is it that you're actually selling so that you can uh, position yourself and package yourself in a way that people then get it and that they see you. No questions asked. So don't talk about how you do what you do. Oh, I do coaching. I do financial planning. Talk about what you do. Talk about the outcome that people get when they work with you, the transformation that they get. People buy based on emotion and they justify their decision with logic. People don't buy information, they buy transformation. So connect with them emotionally. That's when you know you, you, you're making that, that, uh, that connection, that resonance with them. 
Number two, identify your doorway problem. Your doorway problem is the first problem that people have when they are seeking out your services. People look to solve one problem at a time. And so you need to, in your marketing and your pr presentation, need to talk about that one salient problem that's the hottest pain point that your buyer has so that they can self-identify and say, yes, that's exactly what I need. So for example, I have a client who's a social media agency and she was presenting herself as community building. We do social media, we sell social media and we build communities. So she wasn't able to gain traction with clients. Very hard to find clients who want community building because that's not what people want. And you heard it in the room today. People think that social media is gonna get them sales. That's another conversation for a different day <laughs> because I don't believe that that's necessarily the case. Social media is great for authority, building presence, <coughs> building authority online, but it's not typically a lead generation strategy. That's what we uncovered when we switched her positioning to talk about the fact that she helps people grow their business and she uses social media as a tool to do that so they can be seen and then use ways to generate leads for a complete business or business at a complete turnaround. And now she's having to hire more consultants and we're now scaling her business to the next level. Does that make sense with the doorway problem? <coughs> yes, question, so Jesse. Each client is a different doorway problem or uh, just in general, you have a main problem that you can apply to all your so that's a really good question. The question is about, is there more than one doorway problem that you have for different types of clients? Ideally, and I'm getting it to it in a future slide, you wanna have and hone in on one qualified buyer profile. And that qualified buyer profile, like in my example with how did we grow that eight figure company so quickly, we niched. And we had a particular buyer that we were targeting. Once you have a particular buyer in mind, your marketing becomes so much easier. You know what you're selling to them, you know what your doorway problem is, etc. Does that make sense? Perfect. Don't misunderstand your market's need. You don't solve all problems for everybody. That's a quick way to get out to be out of business if you do that. Focus on solving their first problem. Get them in the doorway. Once you've gained their trust and you've solved one problem for them, they're going to want to work with you more. And then you can offer additional services. Number three, define your qualified buyer. So Jesse, this is where I was talking about the qualified buyer is really important. Stop chasing target markets. Target markets keep you broke. Qualified buyers get you paid. If you want traction in your business, you've got to focus on a buyer who, in my definition, has an urgency and a need and a motivation and a budget. And it's not only somebody you want to help because you love working with that type of person, but they actually want to be helped. And they are looking for solutions and they have a budget. So really, really important because this could make or break the business. So the qualified buyer, let's see if I have an example for you with the qualified buyer. I do. So a client of mine who's a life transition healer. She wanted to target, uh, she helps people with grief and she does healing and coaching to help people through grief. She really wanted to help people who were dying. She really wanted to have conversations with people to make their end of life really pleasant and um, easeful. Problem is people who are dying don't want to talk about grief or dying. And people who are grieving, they don't even know they're grieving because they're grieving. And if, and if any of you have gone through a loss, you know what that's like. You don't really ask for help, you just deal. Just hunker down typically and just deal with it. So those are not your qualified buyers. And so with her, we switched her market and targeted caregivers. And so caregivers are working with people who are sick or elderly or dying. And those people really needed the support. They're burnt out. And so we developed a um, set of workshops for the caregiver to help them go 
from burnout to balance. And now she can have those conversations with people who want to be helped and who have a budget. Stop chasing target markets. Target the buyer who wants to be helped and that has a budget. Key. Number four, develop your key messages. Only once you understand what you're selling, who your buyer really is, what your doorway problem is, then you can create a message uh, that will resonate and that will work. If you're trying to target everybody because I can help everybody, that is gonna put you out of business very quickly. From a marketing perspective, it's about standing out. So you've got to create um, a niche or a qualified buyer who uh, wants to be helped and then you need to speak to them, speak to their heart directly. And that's why I said earlier, you have to know your customer intimately so that you can use those words that they're saying to themselves when they wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh my gosh, I really am struggling with this or I really need to find a solution to this problem that I have. And capture that language and use that language in your marketing. The mistake that a lot of business owners make is they use their own language. They, they interpret and interpret things that they think people want and they start using their own language. And that's where the disconnect happens. So don't use your own language, use the language of your customer. And speak the language, speaking the language of the customer means speaking the language of results. Speaking the language of results. Don't speak in your words, speak in theirs. Number five, specify your unique differentiators. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. If you are seen as everybody else, then you are gonna be competing on price. People are gonna want, you're gonna attract the tire kickers, you're gonna attract people who wanna haggle you down. You cannot compete on price. The lowest price always wins. So find something else that's innate to you that you can use as a differentiator. Because let's be honest, I mean, there's a bunch of marketers in this room, there's a bunch of financial people, there are hundreds of people who do what I do and do what you do. The only way we can stand out is to really hone in on what is it that you're doing differently that has nothing to do with price, that has nothing to do with the services you offer, that has nothing to do with the great customer service that you offer. It's got to do with something deeper. Do you have a deep expertise in a particular area? Do you have a signature system or a process that is proprietary to you? Do you have a personal why story that is so connected with what you do that you can really resonate with that customer and be seen as, as the expert to work with? These are the types of unique differentiators you wanna dig into it's gonna make your marketing so much easier and your sales will come a lot more effortlessly because you'll be resonating with people on a completely different level that you won't even be having the money conversation anymore. One example that I have to share here is a client of mine who has a yoga studio. And how many yoga studios are in Vancouver? Thousands. Thousands, <laughs> thousands of yoga studios in Vancouver. How do you make a living running a yoga studio where your entire uh, you know, purpose is to get bums on mats? So how, you, where, how do you do that? How do you get bums on mats when you've got so many others competing? Well, you don't compete. You stand out in a category of one. You figure out what you do differently, how you do that differently, who you do it for differently, and, and you craft your business in such a way that you stand out as a category of one no competition. So we looked at her business and I discovered that she does her practice completely differently than many other yoga teachers around. She provides a much deeper transformation. She provides more hands-on. She provides more of a life coaching slash yoga experience. It's very different than just let's do some asana poses. Very different. So we recrafted her entire story we renamed all her classes so that they were really, really honed in and focused on her market and why they would want to join. We, re we changed her business model. We changed it to more of a 
school where people would come to get trained with her rather than just a drop-in pass because everyone's doing the drop-in pass and the pay as you go. So we completely changed her business. She is now profitable. She was on the verge of shutting the doors of her business, completely frustrated. She's now profitable and thriving. And she's solidified her positioning in the market. And she's now really able to stand out among the other yoga studios around. Don't underestimate your uniqueness. You all have one, two, three unique differentiators that make you unique and amazing at what you do. Understand and communicate that to your audience in your marketing material. Just by doing this one thing, you're gonna stand out heads and shoulders above everybody else. Number six, amplify your expertise. What this is about is visibility and exposure. Without visibility and exposure, you can't attract. And that's really what this piece is about. This is the marketing piece. In order to stay top of mind and tip of tongue, you need to be out there consistently. So my recommendation is always to pick a couple of authority platforms that resonate with you, that you love, and start sharing your expertise, sharing your thought leadership, sharing your genius, sharing your, um, all of your tips and tricks, sharing value, as I heard someone say earlier. So you can, if you're an introvert, maybe you like writing instead of speaking on a stage. If you are a talker, maybe it's video that you use. Maybe it's a combination. Maybe it's podcast if you have that really deep expertise. Maybe it's podcast, your own podcast, or interviews on other people's podcasts. The key is to pick a couple of platforms and do them consistently, weekly, if you can, and building up that level of visibility. Otherwise, you're just like a soda can floating out in the middle of the ocean. Nobody knows who you are. Remember, people are looking for you. They might not want to work with you today or tomorrow, but if you keep showing up in their feeds, if you keep showing up in, in their networking groups, if, you keep, if your name keeps popping up everywhere, they'll remember you and they'll refer you or they'll do business with you two years later. I remember meeting a gentleman at an event, small business event, two years prior. We hooked up on LinkedIn, connected. Two years later, he reached out to me and said, I remember you. I need help with my business. And he became a client from that one encounter. But then through LinkedIn, I was sharing my expertise and my articles, et cetera. So amplifying your expertise is key. Don't just mm -hmm. post one you know, post a week and think, well, why am I not getting uh, that attraction? I have an example here. A client of mine started her business from scratch. Two years, about a year and a half in, she was invited by the Discovery Channel to, to pitch her own pilot TV show. How did that happen? Because we picked a couple of platforms, media interviews, and her own radio show. Because she's got deep expertise. She could talk for hours about her modalities and her healing uh, practice. Once she talked two million listeners, she got the attention of this, the Discovery Channel. The reason why they reached out, because she was everywhere, she had really good expertise that she was sharing, and she had a uniqueness about her. No one was doing exactly what she was doing in the right way. And that's how she caught their attention. So stop hiding. You all have expertise to share. Get clear on what that is. Choose your couple of authority platforms and be consistent. If you're planting, a seed every time you're putting your content out there. Business is a marathon, not a sprint. Marketing is the same. Marketing is a marathon, not a sprint. And so you'll want to reframe that and plan for that in your business. Number seven, humanize your excellence. This is where we then bridge from marketing over to sales because we need both, remember, in order to convert. Humanizing your excellence. We know that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yes? That's business 101. You will hear it at every networking event, I'm sure. 
that's the basis of business. Because if you're in business, you're in the business of relationships. Because people do business with people. And so how are you going to stand out and be likable, trustworthy? How are you going to demonstrate that? Is to humanize your excellence. So you can do that through giving people a taste test of what it's like to work with you. Give people just a little bit of an insight into your genius and cast that vision for them so that they can get a sense of what it's like working with you. There's no uh, coincidence that when you go to Costco, there's all those taste test kiosks around, right? So you've got the big bag of potato chips or the big bag of whatever it is they're selling, and they've got the little cups with the few chips that you can taste. Why? Because we don't want to commit. What if we invest our money in this big chips bag and we don't like the chips, right? We're all consumers. So you want to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer when you are uh, in your business marketing and, and selling yourself. Uh, and other people are no different with you. So how can you create that taste test for your um, prospects? many different ways you can do it. You can offer some sort of a diagnostic for prospects. Uncover uh, some sort of, uh, uncover the problems that they might be having and then show them a recommended solution if they work with you. This is what we could do to fill those gaps. You could do a, a product demonstration if you do product sales. You could do a consultation conversation and really, um, use that as a, as a doing an audit, for example, or a, another type of diagnostic. There are many different ways. You've got to figure out how do your qualified buyers like to buy? How do they like to engage with people? And what are you really good at? And marrying those two things. So for example, a client of mine who's a psychotherapist, she uh, works with people who have um, anxiety and trauma and it's a very sensitive subject. Um, other sensitive subjects are like the money, the money conversation, or um, financial planning, um, you know, wills. Uh, these kinds of sensitive types of conversations are going to require a different type of taste test because you need to gain people's trust and they need to feel comfortable opening up and sharing with you. So with my psychotherapist uh, client, we, she's, very, she's got great presence and warmth and so we decided to capture and utilize that and offer every single one of her prospects a 30 minute call to just be in her presence, to ask questions, to get comfortable and to talk about um, you know, what it might be like uh, to get support from her. And her conversion rates are probably 95% because She's really good at just talking to people and they get a sense from her and then they want to work with her. And in the, in the psychotherapy space, usually those 30 minute consults aren't really offered, um, but she offers them to everyone before they even ask so that that risk is just reduced right there. It's not a selling conversation. It's a get acquainted conversation. So that's how you can humanize your excellence and you've got to find a way to make it work for your business. So don't be afraid to be seen and to be heard. Invite your prospects to experience you, to, to get a sense of your genius, your likability, your trustworthiness, that energy that you bring to the table. Don't underestimate the power that that has to make a connection to somebody that they will remember you two years from now and go and search you out on LinkedIn because now we're all connected and, and want to work with you. So those are my seven steps to master brand positioning. I hope that you've taken away some nuggets here. I would love to learn more. If you're watching on the video, leave a comment below with what your biggest aha or takeaway is. And I'd love to hear from uh, anyone in the room afterwards if you want to come and talk to me about any of these areas. I'd love to chat them through with you a little bit more. I have a gift for everybody. <laughs> in the room and watching live and watching on the replay, which is my fast path to cash. And for those in uh, watching on video, you have the link there to download it at, on my web, from my website, michaelacruici.com slash fast path to cash. If you're in the audience, you have a handout you can take away with you to do that 
uh, when you get home. But this is an ebook that is jam packed with uh, 10 fast action strategies to start implementing some of the things that we've talked about today so that you can avoid some of those sales and marketing mistakes so that there's some key revenue boosting activities and for you to implement right away and start um, seeing that traction and earning more in your business. Uh, and um, there's a lot of opportunities there to see how you can make those tweaks that will really allow you to convert at a higher rate and just grow your business more easily. So it's complimentary to all of you. So I highly encourage you to, uh, to download that. And other than that, reach out to me on my, I'm on social media. Cue Your Business Success podcast is a great place where you can get more tips on my website at michaelafurici.com. I'd love to see you there. Reach out to me, stay connected. Um, ask me any questions. I'm pretty open with sharing, so I'm quite generous. So uh, let me know how I can support you. Kayla, thank you very, very much. You took us right back, right back to the basics of marketing. Very well done. And one other person we together need to thank is, of course, our friends at Ion Connect, without whose support this reproduction would not have been possible. Thank you.